we are in a series called Wanderers, and we are in week four. So, so far we've learned about Moses and his calling, that he was going to be the one that God was going to use to lead the, lead the Israelites out of Egypt. But he heard it through a burning bush. God appeared through a burning bush. That wasn't burning up. It was just on fire. And then Moses did it. God worked through Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And he used it by sending plagues to Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, no. He says, let, let, our, let our people go. No. And then he, he does. But what the crazy thing was, he God separated the sea. He split the sea so they could walk through. And then last week, we learned about the Ten Commandments and what the Ten Commandments are and what they, what they teach us to love God and love people. And so today, we're continuing our, our series and our story. And uh, here's our clue for today. Here's our icon for today that will help us learn the lesson. And so the Israelites have traveled out of Egypt. Okay, remember they were in the wilderness, called to Mount Sinai, and they get Ten Commandments. Well, now they are going to follow God, but they are camping. Okay, this is like wilderness camping. And so think about this. How, what do you need when you go camping? Maybe fire, maybe uh, water, <coughs> tissues. You need a bunch of different things. Well, think about this. There's a million people. And so here's a picture of 800,000. It's from when the Kansas City Royals won the championship. They had a parade in Kansas City, but it was only 800,000. That means there's 200,000 more people that were there. Like, think about this. How do you go camping with a million people? Like, how do you get enough food for a million people? How do you get enough water for a million people? How do you... How much poop is a million people? That's a lot of poop. What are you going to do with all that? And how do you get a million people from Egypt all the way to the promised land? And so God is not a God of confusion or chaos. He's a God of order. And so he has a plan for them and he has a plan for us too. That there, that God has a plan for our lives and for how he wants us to do things. And so let's, let's remember back. Abraham had a grandson named Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons. Well, each of those 12 sons became tribe leaders. Like maybe if you've been to elementary camp, we have tribes, and like the, the adult cabin leader would be the, the tribe leader. And so there's all these different, there's 12 different tribe leaders. And so they all traveled together and kind of oversaw a tribe, an amount of people. And they also had this thing called the tabernacle. Now, here's a picture uh, a picture of the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a place where God said he would meet with them. Uh, it was a very special place, a holy place, where people would go to worship God, but only the priests could go inside. And uh, do you guys have to go to church to meet with God? No. No, we, we can meet with God anywhere we go because God is with us. But at this time, God was in the tabernacle. So... The Old Testament, the tabernacle was where God would meet his people. And so the Israelites would set up this tabernacle everywhere that they went, and the tribes would surround it, kind of like this picture here. So three tribes on each side, and the tabernacle would be at the center of the Israelites. So this is a pretty cool thing, is that uh, all one million people got to see a glimpse of God's presence from where they were camping. So listen to what the Bible says in Numbers 9, 15, and 16. It says, on the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. But from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. This was the regular pattern. At night, the cloud that covered the tabernacle had appeared, had the appearance of fire. All right, did anyone's jaw drop? Does, can you imagine that? A massive pillar over the tabernacle during the day would be a pillar of cloud and at night a pillar of fire. People would be able to see it from their tribe all around the, like, from all around the tabernacle. And how awesome is that? Now think about this. What, what if you saw this in real life? Like maybe our, our church or your home or your school had a pillar of cloud over it or a pillar of fire. You would be like, What? I can't even believe it. That is crazy. But that is how it was. And they could see him. So you could think, what does this story teach us? Like, it's cool for them, but what about us? Is that 
God is the same God, and God wants to lead us and lead us with evidence, with doing things. And so it makes us think, how is God at the center of our lives, just like the tabernacle was at the center of all the tribes? How is he at the center, and how does he lead us? And so before you make a decision or before you do things, you could, do you ask God about it? What about if he wants you to move, or uh, how do you know? And so you can just ask God. Ask God, what do you want you to do? So have they reached the promised land yet? No, they haven't. So where is he trying to lead them? To the promised land. They are going to lead them. So here's our icon again for today. Now, if you see this sign, what do you do? You would turn right. Now, what about this sign? You would stop. What about this one? Do not enter. What about this one? Slow down, yield. It's kind of, I thought I like to think of it as the red light, green light game. When you see a red light, what do you do? You stop. When you see a green light, what do you do? You go. And so if someone doesn't know what these signs mean or what the like lights mean, yeah, they could get hurt like if they were driving. And it's similar to our walk with Jesus. The more we spend time with him, the more we understand what the traffic signals or signs mean or how he guides us. Uh, and so the ways that we can follow God to understand him is like reading the Bible, going to church, praying, listening to leaders in the church uh, that are following God. And when we do these things, we understand more about how to handle different situations and how to follow God. And so let's continue reading Numbers 9, 17 through 18. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the tabernacle, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. And this way they traveled in camp at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. Then they reminded, uh, then they remained in their camp as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. So God could have led them anywhere, literally anywhere he wanted them, and by whichever way. But he chose a pillar of cloud and fire. And at any time it moved, they would pack up their stuff, break down camp, stop whatever they were doing, and follow the pillar. And they had order too. And it even says that they made a trumpet to sound. And so have you ever seen a Black Friday shopping before? It's a little crazy. Could you imagine Black Friday shopping in a trumpet? Like someone had a trumpet, they're like, and then boom, everyone started to go. That would be complete chaos, complete chaos. And so God though, God is a God of order. And there was an order that things would happen. So the trumpet would sound, the people in the east would follow the pillar first, and then south, and then the tabernacle would be broken down, okay, collapsed, picked up and moved, and then the rest of the tribes would go. And so if you think about that, they are following God, following the pillar, but in between all of Israel, the tabernacle's in the middle. And that's the same thing with us when we follow God and have him at the center of our lives. We can know and connect with God so much better. When God tells us to do something, we want to act in it. And it's just like the same thing. Whenever God leads, we want to follow. And if God's stirring something in our heart, we need to look for God to follow him. So I'll close your eyes and I want you to think of two things. The first is what is in the middle of your heart? What's the thing closest to your heart? And the second is who are you following? There are many things that could get in the way of following God and keeping him in the middle of our lives. And God is a loving and gracious God, though. And all we have to say is, I'm sorry, and ask him to help us. And so our main point for today is to keep, our, keep your eyes on God and follow him. And the way that we do that is just like how the Israelites do, is looking for God. When we have our eyes on him, we can follow him and we can spend time with him by praying, reading the Bible, worshiping him with music or art. And when we spend time with God, we start to see him and him in everything. And so who are you following? Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week.